What's up, Math Mob? We are back at it again with another video. So today we are going to continue our discussion on solving equations and making equivalent expressions and equations using properties of equality. And our focus question today, what does it mean to solve an equation? What does it mean to solve an equation? All right, so go ahead and start your warm-up and notes. And when you're ready to continue, go ahead and unpause the video. So you can pause it now, do your notes and warm-up. And when you're ready to continue, go ahead and unpause. Okay, our warm-up says, which, which of these have the same solution as equation 1? So this is equation 1 right here. It's probably not... No, there you go. Equation 1. And it says, be prepared to explain your reasoning. So equation 1 says, x minus 3 is equal to 2 minus 4x. Alright, so let's look at each one of these. So if we put x minus 3 is equal to 2 minus 4x, right above equation A. So let's look and see what's happening. Remember, if x is by itself, it means there's just one of them, right? 1x. So what's happening is we go from, from this expression here to this expression here. 1x is going to 2x. 3 is going to 6. If we look on the other side, it says 2 is going to 4. And 4x is going to 8x. So it looks like we are multiplying each, each side by 2. All right, so 1 times 2x, or, or 2 times 1x is 2x. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. 2 times 2 is 4. And 2 times negative 4x is negative 8x. So yeah, so, so this one is equivalent. And the reason being, we are multiplying each side of the equation by 2. So let's look at equation B. We have x minus 3 is equal to 2 minus 4x. All right, so it looks like we are, if we have uh, negative 3 and we're going to negative 5, it looks like we're subtracting 2 here. And that would give us a negative 5. We'll leave the x the same, right? We're just subtracting negative 2. Or we're subtracting a, a positive 2. So if we subtract 2 here, 2 minus 2 is 0. So basically we're, we're just removing that. So it looks like this one is equivalent also. We're just subtracting 2 from both sides of the equal sign. And quest, er, equation C, let's again put this x minus 3 is equal to um, 2 minus 4x. Hmm, this one's kind of interesting because it looks like this side's more related to this and this side's more related to this. So, well, let's just switch those around, right? We can switch those around. We can put that one over there, this one over here. Well, that looks a little closer, right? X minus 3, we aren't doing anything here, but what are we doing here? All we're doing is like reverse distributive property, right? 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times negative 2x is negative 4x. So these are equivalent, right? We have just two groups of 1 minus 2x. So equation C is also equivalent. It's just written a different way. 
this side of the equation, this expression here, is just written differently. So equation D. x minus 3 is equal to 2 minus 4x. So what are we doing to get from x minus 3 to negative 3? It looks like we're just removing the x, right? If we just subtract an x over here, what happens if we just subtract an x over here? Negative 4x minus another x will give us a negative 5x. So yeah, that looks like what we're doing there. That is also equivalent because we're subtracting 1x from each side of the equal sign. So that, they are all, um, they all have the same solution as equation 1. Okay, let's go to our next section here. We have an equation, and it looks like Lynn and Claire both solve this equation, and they come up with similar answers. Here we have negative 8 is equal to x. That's what Claire wrote, and Lynn has x, my, x is equal to negative 8. So very similar. I mean, they're they both basically saying that um, negative 8 is what x represents. So how did they go about solving these? Did they, did they do it the exact same way? And are they even correct? Alright, so, so we're going to go through each one of these steps one by one to see how they got to their final answer. Okay. So 14x minus 2x plus 3, how did they get to 12x? So they have 14x's, and they subtract two of those x's, and they come up with 12x, right? So they're just combining these, all these x's together to get 12x. So that basically it's the same, same expression here. 12x plus 3 is equivalent to 14x minus 2x plus 3. So that they just left the same since this is the same. And then, let's see, it looks like they used the distributive property over here. Kind of used it backwards, right? They found a number that, that are factors of both 12 and 3. So that number is 3. So 3 times 4x would be 12. 3 times 1 is 3. So they just split these up into groups, right? If you're thinking about the hanger diagrams, they have three groups of 4x's plus 1. So they didn't change anything. They didn't change the, the value of the side. They just rewrote it. They just split these up into three groups. So nothing has changed over here either. Now, Let's see what happens. Now we have 4x plus 1. How did we get to that? Well, if they have three groups of 4x plus 1, and we divide those three groups by 3, that's going to leave us with just one of those groups. So it looks like they divided by 3 here, but that means we would have to divide by 3 on this side. So here we have three groups of 5x plus 9. So if we have those three groups and we divide them by 3, we're just going to end up with the, the 5x plus 9, one of those groups, right? The 5x plus 9. So that looks OK. They divided each side by 3. OK, now how did they get from 4x plus 1 down to 1? Well, they had to remove these 4x's. They had to subtract. Right? That's the only way we could we could end up with just one is just by removing the four x's but did they do that over here if we subtract four x five x minus four x is just one x yeah so so one is equal to x plus nine and now what did they do they got that they just moved 
where they, they subtracted the 9, right, to get the x by itself. So they could tell, I guess so, so Claire could tell what the x is equal to. So x plus 9, so we subtract the 9, we have to do it to both sides, subtracting 9. 1 minus 9 is negative 8. 9 minus 9 is 0, so basically they got rid of the 9. So now we know that x is equal to negative 8, or negative 8 is equal to x. So let's see how Lynn did that same problem. So it looks like Lynn, um, it looks like Lynn started out the same, right? She combined the 14x minus 2x to get 12x. And then, what did she do next? Oh, she did not, she left this one the same and used the distributive property over here to rewrite this group of 5x plus 9. So we have three groups of 5x plus 9. So three groups of 5x is 15x. Three groups of 9 is 27. So, so now it looks like Lynn removed the parentheses by combining all these groups together, all the x's together and all the, the, the numbers together the constant numbers together. So now, how did she get 12x by itself here? So she had to subtract 3, right? That would leave us with just 12x. So she subtracted 3. Did she subtract 3 from this side? 27 minus 3 is 24. So yeah. So she's got 12x equals 15x plus 24. Now what did she do? down here. It looks like, so 12x, um, how did she get to negative 3x? Well, I guess one way she could subtract 15x, right? And if she, if she subtracted 15x over here, it looks like that's what she did because she ends up with just 24. So 12x minus 15x is negative 3x. And 15x minus 15x is 24. So negative 3 times x is equal to 24. So what number could we put in here for x? Negative 8, right? So, so we divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3. So x is equal to 24 divided by negative 3, which is negative 8. x is equal to negative 8. So part two says, describe some ways the steps they, they took are alike and different. Well, they did the first step this exact same. They combined these, this 14x minus 2x. After that, they kind of did things a little different. And, and that's one thing to remember. It's totally okay to use your own creativity in solving these problems. You know, everybody's mind works a little bit different. Some people like to use the distributive property right away to remove the parentheses. Some people don't, right? Claire did not want to use the distributive property to remove parentheses. She used the distributive property over here to add parentheses. And then I think the reasoning behind Claire was if she could get, she was kind of thinking ahead, if she could get a three, if we, she can get groups being multiplied by 3 and a group over here multiplied by 3 then she could divide each side by 3 and to remove all the parentheses at once so she so so Lynn did a little differently she removed the parentheses right away and then added and subtracted um, or, or subtracted the same number from both sides to kind of narrow it down to x is equal to negative 8. So let's look at May and Noah. Because May and Noah also solved the equation. But some of their steps have errors. So we want to find the incorrect step in each solution. We already know that, that x is equal to negative 8. And it looks like they got different answers. They got 24 over 7 and 24 over 27. So let's see what they did wrong. Let's see if we can figure out what May and Noah did wrong. 
All right, so May, the first step she did, it looks like she started out the same way, right? That looks good. She combined the 14x minus 2x to get 12x and kept that the same. Let's see what she did to get to the next step here. So she looks like, um, well, it looks like she subtracted the 5x here, didn't she? She subtracted the 5x from inside the parentheses. And she got 7x. 12x minus 5x is 7x. And then 5x minus 5x is 0. 0 plus 9 is 9, so 3 times 9, right? On the, on the, if you just look at that, that seems like it might be right. But you have to remember, this 5x, this 5x here, is not only 5x's, right? It's three groups of 5x's. So you actually have a 5x, a 5x, and another 5x plus 9. On each of those. So, so this is three times this amount. So what May did is she subtracted the 5x here and she only subtracted 5x, right? She didn't subtract all these 5x's. She only subtracted one of these. But remember, there's still two more here. And she just got rid of them just by subtracting one. And, and that's where um, she made her mistake. So you need to remember, when you have parentheses, when you have something in parentheses like this and being multiplied by a number outside the parentheses, you have this multiplied by this amount. So you can't just subtract the 5x. You sub have to subtract the 15x. Alright? So, that's where May made her mistake. And then it looks like, um, yeah, it looks like she did the rest of the problem correctly, but once she made the mistake here, it created a an answer that was incorrect. Okay, Noah. Noah. Let's see what Noah did. So it looks like Noah. So Noah did the same thing, right? 14 minus 2x is 12x. He used the distributive property here. 3 times 5x is 15x. 3 times 9 is 27. So that looks good so far. Let's see what he did here. Um, let's see. So it looks like he subtracted the 15x on this side, which is totally fine. It gets 27. And did he subtract the 15x here? Uh, oh, looks like he added, right? He, add, he subtracted the 15x here, but then he added the 15x over here. So that would not keep this equation balanced, right? If those were on hangers and he took away 15x's and then added 15x's over here, this would make this side a lot more heavier. heavier. So um, that's where he made his mistake. And then um, it looks like he did the same thing. He continued um, correctly, but since he, since he made that little mistake up here, it created a, a wrong solution. All right, something to look out for. Okay, the next one says solve these equations for x. So if you want to go ahead and solve these, use your own creativity. There's not one correct way to solve these. And when you're ready, unpause the video, and we will go over how I chose to solve them. Okay, so number one says 12 plus 6x divided by 3 is equal to 5 minus 9 divided by 2. So I think what I'm going to do on this, I'm just going to rewrite these. I'm just going to rewrite these expressions here. 12x plus 6 divided by 3. So 12 divided by 3 
So I'm going to have 4 and 6x divided by 3 is going to leave me with 2x's. Right, if I have 6x's and I divide that into 3, I get 2x's. And then I know that 5 minus 9 is 4, negative 4. So negative 4 divided by 2, so this is negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. So 4 plus 2x is equal to negative 2. I still don't know what x is. I want to get that x by itself. Let's see. So I'm going to subtract 4 from each side. Now I have 2x is equal to negative 2 minus 4 is negative 6. So I could do this in my head right now. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. But if I didn't know, I, I could divide. Right? 2x divided by 2 is going to leave me with 1x is equal to negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3. So x is equal to negative 3. Okay, we have number 2. x minus 4 is equal to 1 third times the quantity 6x minus 54. So how am I going to go about solving this one? I think what I'll do is use the distributive property to remove the parentheses. Um, I could also multiply each side by 3 since this is 1 third. And multiply each side by 3. I'm just going to I'm going to use the distributive property here. Um, 1 third of 6x is 2x. And 1 third of 54 is 18. So I just rewrote this. I didn't I didn't remove anything. Um, this this was the same same value this is equal to x minus 4. So now let's see. Um, I could I could do a couple things. I could subtract 2x from both sides. That would leave me a negative x. I don't know if I want to do that. I'm just going to subtract x from both sides. That's still going to leave me with a negative. It's going to leave me with negative 4 is equal to x minus 18. Now I can get this x by itself. I could say I could add 18 and add 18 and I'm going to have um, 12, uh, I'm sorry, 14 is equal to x. Okay, number three. I have negative, th negative the the negative quantity of three x minus twelve is equal to nine x minus four. Um, I think what I'll do here is, yeah, this is like this is like when you just have this negative out here. It's like negative one multiplied by this whatever's in here. So negative 1 times 3x is negative 3x. I'm going to use the distributive property to remove the parentheses. And then negative 1 times negative 12 is positive 12 is equal to 9x minus 4. You could also think of a, a negative as the opposite of. So you could do the opposite of whatever's in here. So the opposite of 3x is negative 3x. The opposite of subtraction is addition. Right? So the opposite of negative 12 is positive 12. Now, I have choices, right? I am going to add 3x to both sides. So I have 12 is equal to 12x minus 4. I'm going to add 4. Since I'm subtracting 4, I'm going to add 4 to both sides. That's going to give me 16 is equal to 12x. So 12 times something is 16. So if I divide that 16 by 12, 
x is going to give me 16 twelfths, or if I simplify that, I can simplify 16 twelfths to 4 thirds. 4 goes into 16 4 times, 4 goes into 12 3 times, so x is equal to 4 thirds, or 1 and 1 third. All right. Well, we did a lot of lot of work today. So, what are some things we want to look out for? What are some things we want to look out for when solving equations? Well, one of them is the distributive property. So one of the problems we did, we worked on with the distributive property. Um, let's choose the this one here. Actually, let's choose this one here. So one of the steps we saw today was they used the distributive property to remove these parentheses. 3 times 5x was 15x. 3 times 9 was 27. And then from this point, they were just able to simply Add, a, add or subtract from, from each side of the equation to, to find a solution. The other thing we want to look out for is combining like terms. That was something we saw today. We saw them combine like terms on the same problem in fact, all four students that solved this problem, the first thing they did was combine the like terms So they found all the x's and combined the x's. 14x minus 2x was equal to 12x. So combining like terms was a useful strategy to make the equation smaller. So on all of our problems that we solved today, we ended up with um, for these problems, x was equal to negative 8, or x was equal to 14, or x was equal to 4 thirds. And this is what solving an equation means. We found out what x was equal to just by simplifying these equations. We found a solution, x is equal to negative 8, or x is, was equal to negative 14, or x was equal to 4 thirds, by simply using properties of equality to make that big equation smaller and smaller and smaller. So this was known as finding a solution.
So we used properties of equality. We always wanted to keep that equation equivalent, each expression equivalent to each other. to find the value of the variable. Okay, and that is it for today. Bye guys.